Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Hennessy Performance YouTube channel. My name is James and today we got a special treat for you guys. We got an S650 Dark Horse Mustang here. This is our Super Venom package, so it's turned up to 850 horsepower, gets a whole bunch of carbon and a whole bunch of other accessories. Today, we're gonna to be going over some safety, some tech tips and general things to look out for when doing an oil change and service on your S650 Dark Horse. Let's get started. All right guys, tools you're gonna to need for your oil change on your S650 Dark Horse. This car has some splash shields that take a seven millimeter socket to take off. We're also gonna to wanna to have some sort of device to grab onto our oil filter in case it's too tight for our hands. So I got a filter claw here, got an extension to make our lives easier when using the filter claw and possibly when taking off our drain plug, which is a 15 millimeter. Also, get yourself a nice good length 3 8 ratchet or equivalent, and that should be about all you need. Before we get started, guys, number one thing we care about here at Hennessy is safety. So, as you can see, we're in an active, living, breathing workshop, so we're going to want to have safety glasses, and we're going to want to have some sort of gloves to protect us from the hot oil that's going to be coming out of this car. As always, follow the manufacturer's recommendations for where to lift your car up, how to set the jacking points properly, and how to set up a two-post lift or a floor jack and jack stands when you're doing your service. Let's go. Step one, we're gonna open our hood and get our lift arm set on the vehicle. Hood release is on the left-hand side on your kick panel down there. All right, now that we got the hood open on the Mustang here, we're gonna do a quick cursory glance, looking at our hoses, looking at our any connections, coolant connection, oil connection, and looking for any signs of small fluid leaks or anything that we can see immediately. So our belts look good. Our coolant is nice and full, so I don't suspect we have any sign of leaks. Both our air boxes are closed. Connections there are good. Valve covers look dry. So, no area concern. Before we get the Mustang up in the air, we're gonna check our oil level real quick. This will just be a good reference so we know how full it was prior to our service. Looks like we got a full oil level right to the top of the hash mark. So that's where we'll that's where we will be aiming for when we refill it with engine oil. So let's pull our cap off. All right, let's get it up in the air. Now we got our lift point set. So let's get the Mustang up in the air, drain the oil, and change the filter. Always give it a little shake. All right, now that we're up in the air, let's continue with our cursory inspection here. We're not doing a full-blown vehicle inspection, but we just want to make sure that nothing obvious is going wrong. Cool? Everything looks great. Let's continue with the oil change. All right, we grabbed ourselves an oil drain. We're going to go ahead and get those gloves on we talked about earlier. We don't have to take our splash shield off just yet. Um, the drain plug pokes out of the back of it a couple inches, so raise our pan up, grab our 3 8 ratchet and our 15 millimeter. A little right up there, give it a nice whack, and it should come out the rest of the way by hand. And remember guys, when you're getting ready to drain this, this oil isn't going to come straight out. It's going to actually come out at a little bit of an angle, so you want to space your pan a little farther back than you normally would. Whoa. There we go. This is a good time to take a look at our oil. Looks like you used oil. Nice and clean and clear. And we didn't have any problems with this engine from the get-go, so we weren't really expecting to see anything here. But if you're noticing any strange noises, any oil consumption, other things like that that could denote an internal engine issue, definitely take a fluid sample of this and send it off to an approved testing lab so they can tell you what's all in there and tell you what to look out for. But for us, we're doing good. So we put the drain plug back in a little early. The oil was starting to curve around and get onto the skid plate, and we don't want to make that mess. So we're gonna go ahead and take our skid plate off now, grab our seven millimeter socket. If all you have is a, a ratchet and extension, that'll do just fine. But for me here, I got a power tool. So that's what I'm gonna use. Periodically as you're taking bolts out, you can kind of pull on that splash chute a little bit to see where the rest of the bolts may be hiding. Definitely don't wanna go tugging on this too hard. It's made of a very light fabric and it is really easy to tear. Looks like that's it for bolts, but we do have a couple of these push fasteners on there still. 
Let's grab a trim tool, pop those out. Let's see. How about that? Now we can finish draining our oil and avoid the mess that we were gonna make, and then we'll move on to our oil filter. While the oil's finishing draining there, this is a good time to inspect your drain plug. So our drain plug utilizes a rubber gasket that's part of this inner, inner uh, face on the drain plug here. Our gasket looks to be in great shape, but always consult a good online resource like AllData, Mitchell, or even a factory service manual to determine if this is a gasket that is one-time use or something you need to replace each time you remove and install the drain plug. For us, we're, go we're okay to reuse this. Now that our oil is reduced to a very, very thin stream, we're gonna take our nice clean drain plug, go ahead and install it back in the oil pan here. Grab our ratchet with 15 millimeter and give it just a light snug there. Wipe away any residue and always consult a good online resource, again, like all data, Mitchell or factory service manual for the torque spec for this drain plug. We're gonna go back when we're done here, we're gonna torque that to factory spec. Now we're gonna move on to the oil filter. Oil filter on this S650 is right over here on the driver's side in the front. Pretty accessible, pretty easy. So we're gonna roll our drain pan over here. We'll grab that same 3 8 ratchet and we'll swap out for our filter claw and extension. Just get our filter claw up in here. Ooh, just enough extension. Perfect. Awesome, that loosened it right up. Now that we've got that filter broke free, we should be able to do it with our hands. Yep. Oh, there's the oil. So I'm sure you saw it made a little bit of a mess when you loosened that filter there. The good news is this metal structure here is not gonna trap any oil or anything like that. We'll be able to use a light degreaser, some brake clean, go up here with some rags and wipe that off, get that nice and clean before we put our splash shield back on. And now our oil filter is basically done draining. So we're gonna very carefully turn that, loosen that oil filter up till it comes off. Probably best to have both cans in there if you can get it. So once it hits that last thread, it's gonna wanna fall right out of there. Oh, there it is. And that's the oil filter out. All right, guys, we got our new oil filter here. It's a Motorcraft FL500S. So this is the stock oil filter for your S650 Mustang and for almost all five liter equipped vehicles in the Ford lineup. We're gonna go ahead and reinstall this now. Let's get a little bit of clean oil. Just get a little bit of oil off that cap. Lubricate that seal. And we're gonna wipe the surface that the oil filter gets screwed onto there. It's known as the oil filter boss. Just double check up there visually. Wow. Yep, it's nice and clean and dry. And there's no old gasket. So, screw our new oil filter on here. This should go on very, very easily, guys, with little effort by hand. You don't need to reef this on. And when you get it all the way screwed down by hand, just give her a little, little tighten past that, and that's all you need. We'll grab our parts cleaner in that same rag. We're gonna clean up the little mess we made earlier. We're dealing with chemicals. We need to protect ourselves. And this is pretty real world, guys. You know, if you're doing it on the ground, on your back, on some jack stands, it's hot outside. The likelihood you make a mess is about 100%. We've got that area all nice and clean. Looks like brand new. Let's roll our drain out of the way. And we'll put our skid plate back on. We'll start with the two push nails that we had earlier. These will be really useful to hold it up so that we can position all of our seven millimeter bolts. All right, look for our, our holes there. Cool. Now that's gonna be held in place while we put the rest of our fasteners in. We'll do our three push clips up front. One goes in the center and then one at each of the outer edges. And now all of our lovely seven millimeter bolts. A tech tip I'll share with you guys. 
when you're installing these seven millimeter bolts like this, the skid plates, the holes in them aren't always drilled in the exact same spot on every car. So you'll never, you don't want to tighten up all of these bolts until you've got at least the majority of them started in their holes. That way you can, you can ensure that you'll be able to grab the skid plate and move it around as you need. Otherwise it becomes a real headache getting all these started. Some manufacturers have a specific sequence you need to go in. Um, I checked on our service data. There is no specific sequence, but we'll still tighten these from center outward just to make sure the panel sits nice and even. And this is very, very light torque, guys. I'm using what is essentially a drill driver set on a very low setting. Now that we're ready to lower our vehicle, we want to make sure and do a quick look around, make sure there's nothing below the vehicle, around the vehicle, that can get in the way when we're lowering it. It's super important to do this check, guys, as it's really easy to forget things in, under, and around the vehicle. Make sure to grab your funnel. Comically large funnel. One down, nine to go. Court number 10 going in. Before we start the Mustang back up, we're gonna go ahead and double check that oil level. Now, if you remember at the beginning, we checked it and we saw that it was full up to the top of the hash marks. So, we're gonna be looking for it to be full to the top of the hash marks here. And with 10 quarts in there, we are full right to the top there. So, we're good to start. Let's remove our funnel. Always have a rag ready to catch those little drops. Reinstall our oil cap. Make sure to do a quick clean off before you get in the car. The last thing you want is oil or dirt or gunk on your seats, on the steering wheel, any of those touch points there. Make sure your foot's on the brake. Hit that start button. The dash should power up here. We want to let the car run for about 30 to 60 seconds. Make sure that there's no messages. Look around and make sure that you don't see that little red genie lamp that indicates low oil pressure. We don't have any of that here. We'll let the car keep running for a few more seconds. Now that we've started the vehicle up, let's do a double check real quick. Look underneath and inspect for any drips, any leaks. So we've let our Mustang sit for about 30 seconds here. We're gonna check our oil level. Remember to pull the dipstick, wipe it, Put it back in. Okay, then we can actually see here that we're just at the bottom of the safe range. So we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit of oil, probably about half a quarter at a time and recheck until we're in the middle to upper range of that safe hash bar. And we're gonna add about half a quart of oil and then give it some time to drain to the bottom and recheck. Once again, pull our dipstick and wipe. Blow a dipstick again, perfect. So now with that added, about three quarters of a quart, we're right at the top of those hash marks there, well within the safe range. Only thing left to do now is reset our maintenance reminder. So let's go inside the car. We'll hit our start stop button one time here. And unlike previous Mustang models, our oil change reminder is now inside our center screen here. We'll go into vehicle settings here. You see our oil life right there. So we're gonna go ahead and press and hold to reset. Reset complete. And now our oil life reads 100%. And now if you'd like, here at Hennessy, we recommend 3,000 mile oil changes on all of our vehicles. So we install an oil change sticker up here. Three months or 3,000 miles, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and swap that oil out again, especially on a high performance beast like our Super Venom. Guys, that's gonna go ahead and do it for our oil change on our S650 Super Venom. So just to reiterate again, safety is your number one concern in this job. You got hot oil, you got fluids that can splash, and you've got a car typically above you. So make sure to consult your vehicle's owner's manual and any online resource that you have for proper jacking points and how to lift your car safely. In addition, always make sure to check those same online resources for your fluid types, capacities, and torque specs. Thanks again for watching our videos, guys. Hope you enjoyed and hope you return for more content on the Hennessy Performance YouTube channel. My name is James. We'll see you next time. Hennessy is awesome, and uh, Tinger School is awesome. 